I think I had two conversations with Kira last week and a fairly consistent um, set of traffic from a Fitbit advocate, Stephen Tucker. So I'd like to thank him for being able to be here. all excited to be here. Um, as, um, as Kieran said, I'm here because we're about to launch the brand in, in this market, hopefully in the next four weeks or so. Have we, I know Stephen's a Fitbit user. How many folks have used or are using a Fitbit product in the world? So, okay. Yeah. Maybe six. So there's a bit here for everyone who hasn't experienced the product. Um, it's not a product uh, presentation. I'm happy to do that separately. It's trying to focus on a very loose brief from Kieran about an hour ago on, on what you guys are interested in. Okay, so uh, Fitbit's about turning you are every day in giving you the data to turn your every day into a path of fitness. That's the vision of the founders of the business. Um, who are we? Um, we started in 2007. Um, two fairly successful startup guys who uh, were previously uh, the founders of the CNET business, which was acquired, and uh, they spent a couple of years thinking about what they really wanted to do, and they're both very passionate about the genuine aims that Fitbit's delivered. Um, 2007, it started. They didn't bring a product to market until early 2010, which is the Fitbit Ultra, which was a desk-bound device. You needed it to talk to your desktop. Um, we're now on the fourth generation of that product, and uh, around the middle of last year we started pushing out into markets other than the US. So we launched in Europe in five markets and I launched the brand in Australia and New Zealand. Um, it's gone incredibly successful in all those markets um, from a consumer perspective and what we're all stumbling upon is the great interest that we're getting from you know the clinical space and, and Know, some of the minds of the people that I've met here just briefly. Um, I don't think that was intended. I think these guys developed something to genuinely get some, get people, help people get more active. And the whole interest that we're getting from a clinical and medical, medical space is a bit of a surprise. But my presentation focuses more on what tools are available to people in that space because I thought that was more relevant for the audience. These are the key principles uh, that Fitbit's trying to answer. We believe if you eat better, sleep better, and more importantly get more active, you're going to lead a healthier life. The hardest one of those to do is to get people more active. And I think that's where we get our greatest comfort. So, um, of our massive product range of two tracking devices, one of them measures all those things and gives consumers the data that they need to improve their health. So on a slide, we're passionate about helping people become more active and lead a healthier lifestyle. Not necessarily by becoming super fit, but just making small modifications to their lifestyle like taking the stairs instead of the elevator and parking two blocks from the office instead of under the building in order to reach the activity goals that they've set themselves. The sort of stuff that comes out when we started to get involved with the clinical medical areas, these are stats that we use. All American based, I don't apologize for it, we're a startup and that's where most of the data is residing. But you know, if a person can do 10,000 steps per day on a regular basis, they're the sorts of health benefits that that person is going to get. I, I'm prime target audience, right? Mid 40s, busy life, kids, wife, all the pressures, 4,000 steps a day. I measured myself for a week. That's what my corporate lifestyle was giving me. Um, now averaging, six months in, this week I'll probably average 15,000 steps a day. 
and I've dropped four kilos. That wasn't, I'm only a small guy, but it wasn't the main intent. But it becomes incredibly addictive, even more so when your wife registers and starts competing with you. So um, I, don't, I don't profess to be medically qualified. I don't profess that Fitbit stats are 100%. But we've got medical people in the room. 10,000 steps a day for most people is a massive step forward. And much better than a cancer gene membership after three months. Um, why are we coming to Singapore? This is a tongue in cheek slide that I presented to the founders in January. Um, in my opinion, the key drivers that need to exist for us to have a business and be able to impact the market are that Apple sell the product in English. Because if they can, we can, um, without localization and, and all the difficulties that that would require for a startup. There needs to be a lifestyle and an interest in health, um, and, and that exists here. If these folks are there, then there's going to be a problem. Okay? Um, I think you get sued for that. <laughs> One of the founders didn't like it. And more importantly, the things that are in everyone's pockets. Um, I bought this one, it's so big. But anyway, if there's an Android device, <laughs> if there's an Android device, or an iPhone in people's pockets, which is pretty much where we're headed, um, apologies for Windows 8 folks, they're, they're not there yet, then there's enough components for Fitbit to serve the purpose um, at a very top level. So what's Fitbit, what's the ecosystem? Um, we're trying to we're delivering a product that's social, that provides coaching tools, um, is innovative in terms of the device that we have, um, and, and what most importantly is motivating, and, and we can help people to change their behavior, which is the hardest thing. Uh, how does it work? Um, we have uh, soon to be three tracking devices that people wear and the Wi-Fi scale, of which there are a number. The, the main difference with our Wi-Fi scale, for those who are interested in weight loss, is that it feeds into our ecosystem seamlessly. Um, our ecosystem used to be PC-based, but with the advent of Bluetooth 4, where you can run a really rich app on a handset without draining the life out of the battery, which don't last more than a day anyway, if you've got an iPhone 5. It allows Bluetooth for, for the PC really to be removed from, from the user experience. So the first Fitbit only worked with a dumb app. I call it a dumb app. The PC would get updated if you were within five meters of your PC automatically. That would feed out that information to your mobile device on Android and iOS. Where we went around October last year, when the iPhone 4S had Bluetooth 4 enabled, we were able to move completely away from the PC. What we saw with users was, on average, they were checking their performance and their dashboard four or five times a day on the PC. That immediately went to 15 when we put it on the mobile device. So it became a whole, a whole heap more interactive. Yeah, it's an example of the dashboard. Those of you who've used it, those of you who haven't, can come and see my PC later. I'll show you my dashboard. Maybe I can toggle off. But we talk to PC and the, uh, the both the, the iOS and Android platforms seamlessly. So when I'm talking to retail partners and things, I say what you need to do as a consumer with Fitbit in order to get the benefits of Fitbit is have one of these devices in your pocket, and most people can answer yes to that. And then all you need to do is make sure it's on your body. So put the Fitbit in your pocket, and when you wake in, the, when you go through your, your, your daily activity, it's going to measure accurately for you, and it's going to be at your fingertips to understand how you know. Um, we're about to do a whole bunch of uh, UX stuff on Fitbit's dashboarding and um, tiles are the of the day, so there's going to be some significant improvements. Um, the mobile app space just changed for us. We've been with iOS uh, for 
more than six months, but uh, 10 days ago we announced that we managed to crack how to work with Android, which is really important. Um, we say publicly that we're working with selected Android devices. Um, for us, as a small startup, it was fantastic that the day before one of our key competitors, Nike, announced they'd given up trying to track the unstructured architecture of, uh, of Google World. Um, I think the Fitbit folks have been really smart. They've targeted devices rather than the platform. So Galaxy 3S, uh, Note 2, two others in the portfolio, and subsequent devices that come along will keep adding. So is it an Android app or is it a Samsung app? I mean, you can decide for yourself, but we're the only tracking device out there that's working across both platforms, so we can answer the call for whatever's in most people's pockets. Uh, the user interface is pretty cool, just a small thing for the users. With Apple, you have to launch it with the new Android devices and 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 uh, a new wrist-based product. You just you just tap and uh, the device, the, the app will launch. That's just a, that's pretty. Uh, just a bit on the product, and uh, I get into some of the stuff that might interest you a little bit more. But Zip One and Flex. Zip and One are discrete devices. We believe about half the market. Well, not necessarily want everyone to know that they're trying to get fit. Um, we believe about half the market, and Nike have proved it with their product, new entrants like Jawbone, half the market will, will, we're happy to be a bit more showy. Uh, we do great sales from lost Fitbits, so this one's far less losable. Um, like the other devices, they're fully waterproof, you can swim, shower with the product, um, uh, down to 10 meters. A really deep shower, it'll be okay. Um, but it won't measure your swimming strokes, it, it, it's only measuring your steps. But, but you can wear it when you're swimming. Big question in Australia. Um, not public knowledge, but uh, we're telling customers. So the next new product from Fitbit will be the Fitbit Force. Um, Fitbit Flex measures sleep um, and steps. Fitbit One measures sleep, steps, and stairs climbed, flights of stairs climbed, it's got an altimeter in it. The Fitbit Force will add the, the, the flights of stairs functionality, and it's a bigger device, and it's got a full display. Fitbit Flex just has five stars on it, which represent 20% of the goal you're measuring. So you can choose to measure steps, or you can choose to measure um, weight loss, whatever it might be, um, and 20% each star represents 20% and when throughout the day the wristband will tell you that you're achieving your goal by vibrating 20% of the day done, done your 2,000 steps in 10, you'll get a little encouragement on your wrist. Um, only the Android and iOS platforms with the rich data have allowed us to have a product that's got less information on it. And that's why we've been able to create a few reflex. What Fitbit Force will add, as well as the flights of stairs, will be the full display, and it's what I call our first aspirational product. So it's, I think there's a bunch of people that might buy this product and then ask you what it does, uh, because it's quite sensitive. It's available on the web. It's the differences between what each product does, and there's a, a roadmap of additional functionality as you go up the range. So what, what, what matters most is, is what does that do to our user base? There, there are more than a million users around the world already, and this is what we find. Um, our customers are 58% female at the moment, 42% male, and 61% of them are overweight. Um, they're 69% we see a, a significant improvement in, in, in male um, uh, uh, fitness. The, the key number, it's less about weight loss for me, but 43% increase in the original baseline activity is what we see from a Fitbit user. So 
you know, I gave you my experience, four or five thousand steps on average, now hitting 15, it's a good month. The average over the last three months is near a 10. So I'm in that sort of zone in my own experience with Fitbit. But nearly doubling your activity levels, it means it's actually changing customers' behavior. How long is it looking at? Six months? Or That's months data or? that we update. It's not been updated this calendar year, but that, that data popped on the performance of the business in 2000 as well. All users. All users. How, how do you know we will take my step with it? Uh, I, 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 I don't know, and, and I'm not going to try and answer a question I don't know the answer to. But I'm telling you the integrity of this business and the intent and the way they approach data, um, I'll, I'll put my hand on my heart. And so that's a factual, a factual basis. I'll, I'll try and answer your question for the people that love the data, but I'm not going to stand up in front of your name. So, uh, I said at the beginning there's a whole movement of non-consumer driven standard consumer tech product and it's in this wellness space. And the business has evolved almost unintentionally. So, we're trying to give people products that they love, track their steps, distance and calories, make it automatic and work with their wireless devices and provide them with data. Um, give people real results in that wellness space, whether it's in a corporate wellness program going into a big, big, big corporate, or into a, 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 a group of like-minded individuals that want to run. So the whole wellness program has evolved. Um, don't ask me on the data. <laughs> um, this isn't Fitbit. This is a survey that was done using pedometers. Okay? And, and what you see is when you start, the, what it's here to evidence is when you start measuring, you get increases in performance, okay? So that's, you know, an American body that's measured it on pedometers. What we're seeing on Fitbit is because it's such an interactive, much more fun exercise that we're getting results significantly above that on the users that are using it. More evidence. Um, I'm not sure what minus six 32% is, but from a corporate perspective, the corporations are worried about sick leave, worried about their healthcare costs, are worried about their productivity, and their major issues in their business, and 10,000 step corporate type programs have been really, really successful. I'll show you some um, testimonial stuff. This is the stuff for people involved in apps, etc., that might be interesting. We just launched an application that allows, for instance, if Stephen wants to put his 3,000 customers, uh, patients. patients, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought you paid, I thought you paid for health care. If, 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 um, if, if My 3,000 bosses. If, if, if Stephen wants to put his 3,000 um, patients, on Fitbit. Uh, we're, we're providing an application now that if Stephen's had a conversation with them, um, we give Stephen administration rights to an onboarding platform, serial numbers of devices loaded into the app. Those customers then register their Fitbit device. They can choose to give permission for their data to be used in aggregate or at an individual level. And then you're able to see for instance, in a corporate wellness space, if we were to run a 10,000 step program with Singtel, the guys worrying about the towers would have a different level of fitness and a different age and demographic from the marketing team. And we'd be able to see how they were performing and make the HR folks look like heroes with beautiful dashboarding on how each group, which you can choose to segregate as you wish, is performing. Now, you know, a bunch of creative people here, the usage of that data, the, the core platform has been developed to help corporate wellness programs, but I'm already thinking on how it can help Stephen with his patients. And in Australia, we have Harvey Norman store staff in their own group, and they're all trying to do the world in 80 days, okay? They're trying to walk around the world in 80 days, which is 67 of them need to do an average of 10,000 steps, which they do every day because they're on the shop floor, 
and they need to keep going consistently for three months, and then Jerry Harvey's going to send shoes to Africa, right? So the application of yeah, the use of the dashboard can be used in many different ways. So not just for what it was intended. It's already HIPAA client, uh, client, so he could actually connect as a doctor with the patient automatically in the US. There's no yeah. additional kind of uh, legal... No, the, pri the privacy stuff has it, it, all been well thought through and the onboarding gives the consumer the option and the consumer or the patient can opt out at any time. So, the only in the US or other countries do? No, no, it's international. So I, I can lodge this in Singapore when we bring the brand here. Um, we have it running in Australia, we have it running in Europe, and we have it running in the US. So examples, brief examples of you know, sort of Autodesk grouping that can be seen from a group. Um, not very clear on the screen, but you know, segmenting the Singtel example, the guys in the towers, their profile, their original position versus how they've gone on the STEP program. Uh, being adopted by some fairly weighty um, health providers, uh, mainly US based. For those of you in that, that health space, um, we're very open with the API. <coughs> we, we are about partnering all the fitness apps that people, you know, whether it's you know, there's 20 or 30 fitness apps available on the web all coming every day. We're trying to open the API so people with a broader fitness program can have their Fitbit steps feeding into that, not instead of. Um, and this is our rewrite protocol on what's available on the Fitbit a a API. If you don't know, it's fitbit.com forward slash dev forward slash dev. You're in. And you guys can see what you can do with it. That's the uh, Great testimonials, you know, you can read it for yourself, but great testimonials around the impact it has when companies deploy this to their staff. And, and you know, I've worked for some big corporates and they used to come around and check how you were sitting at your desk. And then they came and gave me risers to put your laptops on so you sat properly at the desk. And then they came around and took your blood pressure and told you all you were unhealthy. I've never been involved as a patient or a customer of a of a wellness program. I've never been involved where they actually went and did something about it. They just depressed us all on all how unhealthy we were, took our blood pressures, paid our paid the dollars to the corporate wellness company. But what Fitbit's doing in this space is actually having an impact. People are coming back for repeat programs, adopting it, um, you know, through that, that corporate wellness space. So it's all uncharted territory. Um, talking to people like Stephen is new to me. Um, I'm a sales and marketing guy trying to make a crust. Um, but hopefully I've talked about the stuff that maybe is not on the fitbit.com website and you've got something from that. So thank you for the opportunity. Good luck. Uh, I think we have a couple of minutes for Q&A. Um, just a couple. Does anyone have any questions for Fitbit in the house? As long as it's small, it's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark, do you want to? Uh, when you were talking, you obviously got one on your wrist there. Uh, your wrist was kind of moving all around as you were displaying. And if it was in your pocket, you would have had to walk out. Yeah, so um, there's two guys that founded this thing, and they're very proud of their accuracy. There's a blue ribbon, a blue ribbon medical benchmark for activity. Don't ask me what it's called, but it resides in Australia. It's been around for years. A similar sort of clinical guy to Stephen was explaining to me that in the medical space, we first have to prove, Fitbit has to prove, because we are measuring the data and then popping it out the back end, medical people want to know what happens in here, in the middle. Right? So i got two clinical trials happening with uh, Baker EDI, where we'll be clinically proven to a level of accuracy that we're 100% certain will meet the level of accuracy required. But the algorithms that drive this one and the algorithms that drive this one are very different. So if you go to San Francisco and stay there for long enough, 
you will find a rather strange looking guy pushing a pram with a doll in it. And he's been doing it for six months because we're a very big target audience of ours is young mums who are trying to get fit after having their, normally their first child. And there's not a lot going on when you're doing 10 k's a day, pushing the pram, trying to get the baby to sleep. Um, I can't give you any insight into how they've made it meet the benchmark, but I've got this registered on my Gmail account, and this measures registered, it's the first and only one pre-production in Asia, got this registered on my Fitbit account. The most difference in steps that I've had between this device and this device in the four days that I've had it has been 50. Okay, so I've had a fifth, that's, that's research of one. And I, I'm, <coughs> there's 120 people at Fitbit in San Francisco and 90 of them stare at oscilloscopes every day with little robots doing this. So I'm pretty confident that we'll end up with a product we won't have the world full of blogs that my flex isn't as accurate as my one because there's a risk to that. Um, the actual mechanics of the device are very similar. Um, a number of our competitors build electronics into the van. Um, quite unwieldy, quite heavy. This is very light. And all it is is the Fitbit one <coughs> miniaturized by about 70% and just slots into the wristband. <coughs> Which means we can bring some funky colours as well. And we just move the pill around. So I'm confident the accuracy will be good. Um, so far, 50, 50 steps different on pretty big days, 15,000 plus. So. Do you know if, if, if your target audience is people in front of a lot of mission buttons, like if they want to get this, do this 50 steps, how do you hear about it? No, I, 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 do you know what? I, 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 I won't talk on behalf of the founders of the business, but I've met them a few times. Directionally, directionally okay is good. You know, behavioural change is really, really hard, and we have literally millions of people changing their behaviour with this thing. And, and the six, seven people have got one. Um, you know, it, it does. It, it really changes you. And, and, you start competing with other Fitbit users and they've all got the same level of accuracy. So, uh, as long as you're directionally correct, I, I, I think we're delivering on the intent in the vision of the business. For a startup who want to write application for, for the device, yeah. can the app talk directly to the device? Good question. Good question. Most of the work I've seen, because I've led some of it down in Australia, is about, we've got this thing over here, and we want your data. We want your data to appear in our product. Are you okay with that? And in the main, the answer's been okay. I'm not sure whether we can we, we allow the reverse, but it's a simple email to me, and an email up to the technical folks. Um, I'm happy to distribute that rewrite uh, API slide through through Kira and my email address probably. Okay. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know, but I'll find out. Um, I'm very curious about that. From from my experience, um, you can get better by better access to the API, so I can see all my steps, all my activity better by better. Uh, but that's reading from the yeah. Fitbit.com. Yeah. Uh, I believe. There are or maybe ways to intercept that data directly, yes. uh, but it, they're they're not the approved ways. Uh, but the but the but the API <laughs> is. I think have a guy in Silicon Valley trying to yeah the, the way to contact. Yeah, before there was a before there was an official API, there were unofficial ways of reading it directly off the device. Um, I'm not sure how that's going now, but I don't think anybody is is that bothered with it anymore. Um, because, I mean, the API is, is very robust and, and the tech support is great. Um, you know, like you can, you have to require access to get the minute, uh, uh, special access to get the minute by minute stuff, uh, but once you get it, everything works, it's all good, it's well documented, uh, it's a good, good library, good API. So you guys were charging for it at one point. You guys were charging for it at one point, if you want to get access to your own data, you were charging for it. When the revenues were less than 10 million. <laughs> 
now it's been uh, this couple of the reporting dashboard. Right. I've had major health funds expecting to write a check for five thousand dollars a month. Between you and I, we yet to charge a single cent for a corporate reporting dashboard that could be running ten thousand people because we're at startup phase and uh, we're still startup even after 2007 and we just want the thing out there and grab the scum. So, but I, I guarantee you, this, I, I set the whole Harvey Norman group up, so I've got admin rights. I, you know, I couldn't even plug the laptop in. You see how tech savvy I am. And um, wonderful data and, and intuitive and easy to do. And it's the sort of thing my IT director would have paid a lot of money for in a previous life. And Fitbit's just saying, yeah, no problem. As long as you're Fitbitting, you can have it. So that's the mentality of the folks. So as is customer service. If they go wrong, and you, know, you can even blag one if you lose it, if, you're wrong, if I'm honest. They really want to keep everyone happy. Thanks, Steve. Uh, that was Thank great. You. And done.